subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. There is yet another new coronavirus in the human population. But before we get into it, it's nothing to worry about just yet. We don't know if it causes a disease or even if it spreads between humans. There is no risk according to all the data that we have right now. If its infectivity and its ability to cause disease in humans is established, it would become the eighth coronavirus to enter the human population. Another thing that this data suggests, the preliminary data that we have right now, is that this coronavirus actually came into the human population from dogs. This is the very first instance of detection of canine coronavirus in human swabs and naturally the findings are concerning because we now also have to start preparing for future pandemics so that we know what is coming. That is the main takeaway from the finding of this canine coronavirus in the human population. In this video, we'll take a look at these findings that came from Malaysia and how they were made and we'll find out what the implications of these findings are, what the other coronaviruses in the human population are and how scientists think that this canine coronavirus that was found in humans for the first time came from dogs and could have actually entered the human population through cats. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. So once again, to reiterate, there is nothing to worry about at the moment and there is nothing to show that this virus could spread among humans. But let's look at what the findings are and how they were made. This canine coronavirus that is now detected in humans is called CCoV HUPN 2018. When the COVID-19 pandemic began last year, Dr. Gregory Gray, who is an infectious disease epidemiologist at Duke University and also the last author of this study, was wondering if there are already other coronaviruses in the human population that are circulating that we are unaware of. So he assigned his graduate student Li Shanzhu to come up with a test to detect all kinds of previously unknown coronaviruses in people. Their team developed tools that can detect multiple types of coronaviruses in human patients and they set about testing this in pneumonia patients. The very first group of tests that they did was a batch that was done on samples of pneumonia patients that were taken back in 2017 and 2018 from a hospital in Malaysia. So the actual infection and samples were taken much before the COVID pandemic even though the virus was detected later. There were a total of 301 samples taken and in 8 of these the team tested, they discovered that the patient's upper respiratory tracts were infected with a new canine coronavirus. This was mind-blowing because as far as we knew before this, dogs did not transmit coronaviruses to humans. The team had what seemed to be the very first instance of such an infection. So they then contacted Ohio State virologist Anastasia Vlasova, an expert on animal coronaviruses and also the first author of the paper. She was very fascinated by what was seemingly the first recorded transmission of canine coronaviruses to humans. And so Vlasova, her final year grad student Annika Diaz and their entire team cultured the virus in their lab and then sequenced its genome. What they discovered was something very interesting and unique when they sequenced the genome of this virus. The virus held a mutation in the form of a deletion which is absent in all other canine coronaviruses but is present in human coronaviruses. This deletion which is called the 36NT nucleotide or 12AA amino acid deletion resulted in very dramatic changes in the cellular structure, say the authors, and that the deletion indicates that a recent zoonotic transmission or a jump from dogs to humans occurred. This deletion is thought to confer the ability to the canine coronavirus to persist inside human bodies and this ability could actually be the linking step that is required for the viruses to jump from dogs to humans. 
Vlasova's team further found that two of the eight canine coronavirus samples contained high amounts of the novel coronavirus and one of them was actually able to cause an infection to canine cells in the lab. The researchers also found that the sequences contained fragments of coronavirus sequences from pigs and cats. So, CCoV HUPN 2018 is actually described by the authors of the paper as a novel canine feline recombinant alpha coronavirus, and they think that while it's definitely a canine coronavirus, because it also has fragments of cats and pigs one of them could have been the intermediate host, likely cats. Recombinant viruses are actually quite commonly found in animals. The cells of animals like pigs and birds are actually very good environments, almost like labs, for recombination and all these weird mutations of viruses to occur. These animal hosts can be infected with a virus from one animal and then with the virus from another animal, but obviously these two have two different genomes. These viruses can then recombine or end up developing new mutations inside these favorable host animals and then this raises the risk of them developing the ability to jump to humans. So far, apart from this new virus, there are a total of seven coronaviruses that can infect humans and cause disease in us. These include the SARS-CoV-2 virus and the SARS and MERS viruses, but also four other human coronaviruses, which now only cause a mild common cold in humans, but we think were likely more deadly in the past. We know of many coronaviruses in animals, but we know of only seven so far in humans. These seem to primarily cause respiratory tract diseases. Coronaviruses can infect humans and animals differently. In pigs and cattle, they seem to cause primarily diarrhea, according to many studies. In fact, coronaviruses infecting animals was discovered first back in the 20s and 30s. In 1931, when domesticated chickens came down with what was then called infectious bronchitis virus. Newborn chicks would have breathing difficulty and then die. The virus was subsequently isolated in 1937. Then in the 40s, two more viruses which were first called the mouse hepatitis virus and the transmissible gastroenteritis virus were found in animals. They later turned out to be coronaviruses. Coronaviruses in humans were first identified in the 60s. Overall, these viruses are classified into four genera or genus, alpha, beta, gamma and delta coronaviruses. Of these, only alpha and beta coronaviruses infect humans. And as far as we know, all of them came from animals. Nearly all viruses through history can be traced back to animals and all coronaviruses seem to come from bats. We have seen in previous videos about how bats are capable of harboring so many viruses without becoming susceptible themselves to disease. Bats harbor a large number of coronaviruses, but there have also been other intermediate animals involved. The HCoV OC43, for example, likely came from either rodents or cattle. SARS came via civets and MERS came via camels. SARS-CoV-2 we initially suspected came from a pangolin or a fish, but we don't know yet. All of these, all of these spillover events are instances of zoonotic transmission where the virus jumped from an animal to humans. But it's very difficult to attribute spillover events to just one reason or another. They're just a side effect of humans living with animals, including living with animals safely, such as alongside dogs and cats. These can also be natural pathways to viruses entering the human population. Researchers actually think that there could be plenty of other viruses in the human population that we haven't found already, and that the more we look, the more we'll find. But back to dogs and cats, now that we've discovered this coronavirus, that likely transmitted from dogs to humans, even though we have not established the ability of this virus to cause the disease in humans, does this raise the risk of dogs and cats being susceptible to coronavirus? Well, we already know that dogs and cats can catch the virus, but 
there have been no recorded instances of these animals transmitting the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is causing the COVID-19 disease, to humans.